morning, everybody. My name is Lindsay, and I have a restorative yoga class for us today that will open up through the chest, provide some uh, lengthening uh, through twists and uh, support the hips. We'll take um, a few minutes to warm up. Uh, and while we're doing that, I'll talk about the props that we have. Um, I have uh, a couple of pillows uh, as backup items, as well as two blocks and a bolster. If you don't have a block and a bolster or two blocks and a bolster available, um, some, some big pillows are, uh, and blankets are, are really nice just to provide a little extra support. So <clears throat> I'll begin our warm up today. And we'll plant our feet about hips distance apart. We'll grab on behind the thighs and we'll start with some seated cat cows today. So we'll start with connecting with our breath. As you inhale, push the chest forward, lift the gaze up towards the sky, getting a stretch through the front of the body. And then exhale, draw the belly in, bring the gaze towards the belly button. Feel the shoulders spread on the back of the body. We'll continue to take these movements, the inhale to push the chest forward and lift the gaze up. And then exhale to round down, gazing at the belly button. So we'll take these breaths nice and slow here, starting to slow down our breath, which helps calm the nervous system and gets us ready for this deeply restorative practice. Allowing each breath to move in and out of the nose, nice and slow. Great, we'll take one more round like that. We'll finish up our seated cat cows, drawing in the lower abdominal muscles. The hands still wrap around the backs of the thighs, and we're going to keep the engagement through the abdominal muscles, spread across the chest, and slowly lower the torso back, just gently, drawing the belly in, keeping the spine nice and straight here. We're going to do a little bit of warming up through the core muscles, so a variation of a modified boat. So the belly draws in shoulders back and down and we'll keep the right foot planted here and as we exhale just lift the left shin up towards the sky and then we'll lower the left foot back down towards the floor and we'll replace lifting the right up so we're taking these movements nice and slow here so that we can focus on the breath and we're just doing a warm-up here for the core for the thighs across the chest and the back we don't need to go to 100% right now, just feeling into these muscles through the core, getting a little bit of heat built up before we take our cooling restorative practice. Keeping those breaths going nice and steady in and out. Great work. We'll do our last one, feeling nice and even, finishing with that right chin lifted. And then we'll slowly lower the right foot back down towards the floor. Keeping a hold of the thighs, we'll rise ourselves back up, taking a few cat cows again. Inhale to lift up, look up. Exhale, round down, roll down. One more time, inhale, lift up, look up. And then exhale, round down, roll down. Great work, bringing ourselves back up to seated. We'll come into a bound angle pose, bringing the soles of the feet together, knees open out nice and wide, and grabbing onto the ankles around the big toe area. We'll just take a gentle kind of wagging of the knees 
up and down, a gentle fluttering of the knees, warming up this joint. We'll have lots of more time in our bound angle pose later on in class, but this will just allow us a little bit of warming up through the hips and through the neck and the shoulders. We'll pause that bouncing of the knees, drawing the feet in maybe a little closer, walking the sitting bones in towards the toes. We'll grab on again to that spot that we'd like to grab on to, drawing the lower belly in, we'll lift and lengthen the spine, drawing the shoulders down. Noticing a sensation through the tops of the shoulders, maybe running from the ear to the shoulder. Then we'll draw the chin down towards the chest, still keeping the lower belly active and engaged, the spine nice and lifted, feeling a stretch along the backs and sides of the neck. And we'll bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. Taking those long, slow breaths. We'll bring the chin back to chest. And then the left ear back to the left shoulder. And we'll take some time here, breathing into the sides of the neck and the shoulders, bringing our awareness first to the physical sensations in the body. We'll start to transition our head into taking slow half circles. The right ear will come to the right shoulder, the chin will come back to the chest, and then the left ear towards the left shoulder. Using that awareness of the sensations in the body to pause in any of the spots that feels, you know, that would benefit from some extra time. Nice and slow. Great work. We'll come back to center, moving again, very slowly, stacking ourselves up nice and tall. I'll take a gentle twist here in our bound angle pose, releasing the hands from the feet, keeping the spine still nice and tall. We'll bring the right hand back behind the hips, pushing in through that right hand to lift and lengthen the spine. And then the left hand will come to the right knee. Taking it nice and easy here at first, drawing the shoulder blades down the body, just allowing for a little extra length between the ears and the shoulders. Taking a few rounds of nice slow breath here, connecting, staying connected with the breath. With your next exhale, begin to walk the hands back to the center. Staying nice and tall here. And then we'll move to the other side, bringing the left hand back behind the body and the right hand comes to the left knee. Keeping the breath steady and slow, moving in and out. Bringing the gaze maybe over towards that left shoulder. Drawing those shoulders down the back just in case they've started to creep up a little bit. Great work. Slowly coming back to center. We'll grab onto the toes and the feet one more time, drawing the spine nice and long, pull the shoulders down, feel nice and long through the neck. Then as we exhale, drawing the belly in, we'll hinge forward from the hips, bending the elbows in towards the knees, lowering the torso down over the toes. Allow the head to be nice and heavy here, giving yourselves little half circles or little gentle movements, softening and stretching, breathing steady and slow.
Great work. We'll pause that movement, drawing the lower belly in, slowly rising ourselves, ragdolling up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Head comes up last. Great work. We'll bring the hands back to the knees, slowly lifting the knees back up. We'll walk the feet out just a little bit, bringing the hands back behind the hips. And we'll take a gentle windshield wiper, lowering the knees from side to side. Great work. Feeling that movement through the body, that little bit of waking up of the muscles around the hips, the spine, the shoulders, the neck. We'll pause our windshield wiper and start to get ourselves set up for our restorative practice. So I've got these two blocks. I'll set one up on the highest setting and another one fairly close to it on the middle setting. I'll take my bolster and I'll place it over these blocks creating a bit of a ramp. Getting it nice and solid there, feeling okay, it's fairly supported. Without the, if you're practicing without the bolster and the two blocks, a similar shape can be created with your pillows. For this first posture, we'll be bringing our hips to the base of the bolster and slowly draping our torso, our back over this supported ring. Lowering the head down nice and soft. We'll extend the legs out into a big V shape. The legs are opened nice and wide. If you would like a little bit of support underneath the knees, a towel or a pillow underneath the knees can be really nice here. So with our restorative practice, as we come to settle into these poses, we want to get ourselves set up so that the body feels almost no sensation at first and that we're holding these poses for 10 to 15 minutes sometimes, then the sensation slowly starts to creep up on us. Like the good kind of creep. We'll take a few moments here just to find the support that we would like for this posture. If having the arms hang like this is somewhat uncomfortable, you can alternately bring a support underneath the arms here, allowing yourself to be supported a little bit more across the arms or underneath the knees. Ultimately, if you're feeling that you need a little bit of support underneath the ankles, if you're maybe on a thinner mat or on a harder floor, you might enjoy some thick socks or blanket underneath your heels. So we'll take all this time to just get ourselves 100% comfortable. We want to be able to kind of sink effortlessly into our mindfulness practice here, allowing the body to just naturally relax and to release. And as you are starting to settle in a little more comfortably. We'll give ourselves some time to connect with our breath. You might enjoy closing your eyes through these poses. allowing the mind to focus solely on our yoga practice. And this practice includes the observation of the breath,
a steady in and out through the nose. Taking some time to feel yourself release any muscle engagement. Releasing the muscles of the face. Releasing the muscles of the jaw. Releasing the muscles around the shoulders, maybe drawing the shoulders down just a little bit more, lengthening the neck. Releasing the muscles in the arms and the hands. Releasing the muscles in the chest and the belly. Releasing the muscles and the hips and the glutes. Releasing the muscles in the legs and the feet. As we take these poses and hold them for longer, we might find our mind wants to wander off the mat. Oh, a nice practice is to dedicate the practice to someone or something Maybe an intention that you have for yourself or for the world. And this dedication or heartfelt desire is referred to as a sankalpa. 
and we can form our own sankalpa with positive language in the present tense and use this sankalpa as almost an anchor for the mind, something that we can come back to through the practice if we find ourselves kind of drifting away. Your sankalpa may be something that you've been working with for a while, or maybe it's the first thing that pops into your mind. If nothing is coming, then a sankalpa, like I am resting and healing my body and mind. We have another three minutes here. So if there are any slight adjustments you would like to take to get just a little bit more comfortable, you're invited to do so. We'll begin to transition out of this posture, bringing some movement to the fingers and the toes, pointing the toes towards the center of the mat and then pointing them back out towards the outer edges of the mat. Doing this movement a few times, warming up through the legs. We'll bring the hands down by the hips, pushing into the floor, slowly rise yourself up off the bolster. Wonderful. We'll move into our supported deer pose. So we'll bring our right 
thigh up to the base of the bolster. Nice bend in that knee. You might start by just stacking the knees over each other. And we'll begin to drape our torso over the bolster. So bringing our sternum to rest on the bolster, resting on our right cheek, hands come down by the sides. And from here, you might choose to extend the left leg out nice and long, getting the hips a little closer towards square. Turning a little bit more into a supported pigeon pose, but finding something that is comfortable here. Receiving the benefits of a twist as well as some stretching through the hips and the IT bands, the hip flexors. Again, similarly, you might enjoy bringing some padding underneath the arms. Taking some time to make any adjustments, maybe lengthening the spine by pushing into the floor and redraping yourself. Just taking some time here to get really comfortable. Feeling supported and comfortable here. Allowing the breath to move in and out through the nose. Allowing the breath to be slightly longer than the natural breath that we arrived with today. Feeling yourself releasing into deeper relaxation. Again, softening the muscles of the face. Releasing any gripping in the hands. Shoulders softly fall to the outer edges of the back. Belly is soft.
We have another two minutes here. Allow yourself to sink. Maybe a little deeper. Begin to start moving out of this side of our deer pose, pushing into the floor with the hands, lifting the torso up, and bringing ourselves back to center. We'll begin to bring ourselves to the other side, bringing the left thigh up against the edge of the bolster. Maybe stacking the knees again. And then draping the torso over the bolster. Lowering ourselves down. Now you might extend that right leg out a little longer, or you might keep the leg bent. Before we settle in completely, let's push our hands into the floor and re-lengthen the spine just a little bit more and then drape ourselves down, coming to rest on our left cheek. Softening ourselves down, receiving this gentle twist and the stretching through the hips. A release through the shoulders and the neck. You might notice yourself able to drop into these long holds faster. Being able to calm the mind and settle just a little bit quicker. Being able to enjoy the stillness. Sooner, the more we practice.
We have another four minutes here in this position. So if there are any slight adjustments you would like to make, allow yourself to become just a little bit more comfortable. Begin to make our way out of this position, pressing down into the hands, rising ourselves back up. Nice and slow, bringing ourselves back to seated on the sitting bones. And we'll start to move a little bit deeper into our postures. We'll bring our hips back to the bolster. And we'll bend the knees and we'll pull the soles of the feet together in front of us, coming into a bound angle pose. And the torso is supported by the bolster, lowering ourselves back down onto the bolster, getting more of an opening through the hips. You might find that you'd like a little additional support underneath the knees. So you can use the pillows, blankets, towels, etc., to pad underneath the knees. Or you might enjoy getting a little deeper through the chest and removing the blocks from underneath the bolster and using those blocks underneath the knees. We'll allow ourselves a little wider of an angle in the legs as when we do when we're seated, allowing a diamond shape to form kind of naturally.
taking a gentle drawing down of the shoulder blades, just allowing the neck to be nice and long here. Arms come down by the sides. They can rest in airplane wings or cactus arms or just gently draping over the bolster. We'll give ourselves 10 minutes in this posture. So feel free to take any of those little wiggles or adjustments that would help you just become a little bit more comfortable. And as we sink into our bound angle pose, settling the body, resting comfortably, we can bring our awareness back to our breath. That steady rhythmic in and out. Now lead us through a very calming breath practice, very calming form of pranayama called Veloma breath. And it is a full inhale, followed by a releasing of the exhale of one third of the breath, two thirds of the breath, and then a complete release, followed again by that full inhale. So we'll start by exhaling out all of the breath. Taking a nice full inhale. We'll exhale out one third, two thirds, and then release the breath completely. Inhaling fully. Exhale one third. Exhale two thirds. Exhale completely. Inhaling again, nice and full. Exhale one third. Exhale two thirds. Exhale completely. Inhale fully. Exhale one third, exhale two thirds, exhale completely. I will release my counting off of the Veloma breath, but if you find that to be a calming form of breath that you would enjoy, you are welcome to continue taking the full inhale followed by the three-part exhale. If returning to a natural breath is something that you would prefer, you are likewise invited to do that.
We have another two minutes here. Allowing for a, a release of any muscle engagement. Allowing yourself to soften in one new spot. We'll slowly start to bring ourselves back up to seated, using the hands to help lift you up. We'll bring the knees back together. And roll the bolster off to the side. We'll bring a prop to either side of the leg. So I have one on each side. That can be a block or a blanket or a pillow. And we'll slowly lower ourselves all the way down onto the floor. We'll start by pulling the knees into the chest, giving ourselves a hug. A gentle rock from side to side. <sighs> then we'll pause that movement. Keeping the right knee pulled into the chest, we'll extend the left leg out nice and long onto the floor. We'll plant the right foot on the inside of the left leg and slowly open the right knee out towards the right side of the mat, coming into a supine tree pose. So you might find that you would like a little bit of support underneath that right knee. We'll only be holding this pose for two minutes. So you may not need the full support of a prop underneath that leg, but it is there just in case. Hands can rest down by the sides on the hips or in those cactus arms or airplane wings to stretch out more across the chest. Alternately, the hands can come up overhead into a diamond shape.
We'll bring the hands back to that right knee, slowly drawing the right knee back up towards the sky. We'll draw the right knee again into the chest, placing the left hand on that right knee, opening the right arm out towards the side. We're gonna take that right knee across the body to the left side of the mat, coming into a twist. Lowering that left, I'm sorry, right knee down towards the left side of the mat. Again, just holding this for two minutes. So you may or may not want the support of a block underneath that right knee. Making any adjustments. Helping just become a little bit more comfortable here for our two minutes. We'll begin to make our way out of this twist, helping the right knee come back into the center of the chest, squeezing the right knee in, drawing the left knee in. We'll extend the right leg out now nice and long. And we'll plant that left foot to the inside of the right, and begin to open the left knee out towards the left side of the mat, coming into our supine tree pose. Again, you might enjoy supporting that knee with a prop. But as we're only here for two minutes, you may find that you don't need a prop. Noticing any sensations through the body. Just noticing these sensations without any judgment associated with them. Not a good or a bad sensation, just noticing what it is, where it is.
slowly helping that left knee back up towards the sky. Drawing the left knee into the chest. And then we'll take the left knee over the body to the right side, using that right hand to help bring the left knee over to the right side of the mat. Again, spending two minutes here. So either supporting the knee or just allowing gravity to help release it. Arms again can be extended into cactus arms, airplane wings. One hand might be supporting that left knee. I'm taking a diamond shape with the arms overhead, opening through the chest. We'll slowly start to make our way out of this twist. Bringing the left knee back up over the chest, squeezing the knee in, drawing the right knee in. Great work. We'll roll over onto our side body and then help ourselves up to seated. We'll finish up our practice with a supported Shavasana. So one way that I like to support myself in this posture is by really elevating my legs up. So I'll take my two blocks and create almost a little mini Stonehenge with the bolster. This will start to uh, replicate almost legs up on a chair or legs up on a bed or a couch. So if you're nearby um, and are um, wanting that sensation but don't have the blocks and the bolster, you can shimmy your way over to um, that location. If this seems too high, uh, you can always just lay the props directly underneath the legs, uh, underneath the knees or underneath the calves. For this, I'll scooch myself a little closer and I'll stack my calves on the bolster, maybe bringing the hips just a little closer to uh, the base and lower my torso down onto the floor. The knees can gently come out towards the sides, the toes out towards the sides, hands come down by the hips, Palms face the sky, or maybe a hand on the belly and one on the chest. If you'd like to cover yourself up with a blanket or cover the eyes with an eye pillow, all is welcome here. Releasing into that comforting sensation of Shavasana, our complete release pose. Allowing the toes to relax. Allowing the feet 
to relax. Allowing the legs to relax. Allowing the glutes to relax. Allowing the hips to relax. Allowing the belly to relax. Allowing the chest to relax. Allowing the whole length of the spine, and all the muscles around it to relax. Allowing the fingers to relax. Allowing the arms to relax. Shoulders relax. Neck relaxes. Allow the jaw to relax. And the tongue to relax in the mouth. Allowing the muscles between the eyebrows to relax. The muscles of the forehead around the third eye relax.
slowly begin to bring a little bit of movement back into your fingers and your toes. Taking some slightly deeper inhales. Let's stretch the arms out. Excuse me, overhead. Draw the knees into the chest. We'll roll ourselves over onto our side body, resting in a fetal position. And then slowly, gently help ourselves back into uh, a seated position. Taking a moment here as we sit, we can allow the eyes to stay closed to the gaze softly lowered. Taking a few breaths. Feeling a change mentally, physically, emotionally. Feeling gratitude towards yourself for taking time for your practice today, for resting and relaxing, for healing. We'll bring the hands to heart center. Thank you all so much for your practice. The light in me sees and honors the light in you all. Namaste.